Here we go. This is my rum and clay DIY. I hope you enjoy it. I'm gonna tell you straight away, I have no idea what I'm doing. This is complete experiment. I just know the look I'm going for. I have no idea how I'm gonna get there. So you're in this with me from the start and I hope you enjoy the journey with me. Starting with this sheetrock joint compound, and this is what I think will work the best. It's a 90, it's it's a it's called a 90 joint compound, and that just means that there you have 90 minutes for um, workability. So before it starts drying, you've got 90 minutes. So there's different levels of dry time, and I just picked the longest because I want it to be able to manipulate it for as long as possible without it having set up on me. So starting with this, and I'm gonna add water to it to create the kind of peanut buttery consistency that I want. And then I'm gonna add the joint compound to the amount of paint that I want. Now, I also know that I wanna make sure that I mix up enough of this product to do the entire project because I don't, I'm not measuring, so if I have to make up another batch, the color could possibly be off and I wanna make sure that it is as consistent as possible throughout the entire space, which is why I'm starting with this small bathroom just to sort of see how we like it and how it sets up and just the whole process. So we're using this bathroom as the sample spot before I go into the bigger space in our basement space. <laughs> I'm just gonna follow the directions for mixing this compound up this old bucket with water. I also have this extension on my drill. It's just a mixer. You can find it in a paint store or any sort of hardware store. This makes mixing the compound and the paint a lot more consistent. Here goes nothing. <laughs> So what I'm going for is kind of like a pink cake batter consistency. It's still kind of liquidy and it's pretty well mixed in. I'm going to add a little bit more of the compound. This is kind of like baking in essence, you know, and I think that's, that's where I thrive. I am really stubborn about not using patterns or recipes because I feel like it's so easily um, you can get things mixed up in a recipe or a pattern very easily so why not just figure it out yourself and then you'll know. All right now I'm gaining confidence. I can see the pancake batter, I can see the swirls in the the compound, and yes, we are at pancake batter type of consistency. If you can see that, I'll just sort of dip this and you can see it's still very wet, but it's it's goopy. I'm gonna add some of my paint, and this is a custom color that I've had created. It's like a creamy white. It's from Sherwin Williams. I had them. Uh, mix it for me because I knew exactly what I wanted and this is one of my favorite colors. So <clears throat> if you're interested, I can share the the recipe for this creamy white. Once you get to see this project done, I get the most durable paint possible from Sherwin Williams, which isn't cheap, but it's good quality paint, which is important to me. I like this cup because I can use this with my trowel here. And that's how we're gonna be applying it to the wall is this trowel versus a paintbrush or a roller because it's going to be thicker. Here's that creamy white. It's gonna be hard to tell. To me, it looks just white, but it does something magical when it hits the wall. And I'm hoping that with the compound and the white, it will do something really special 
I also need to um, tape off some things. Uh, I usually put saran wrap around my toilet bowl so that I don't have to go through so much painter's tape, but I almost forgot to do all of that. I got too excited about making this recipe up. All right, here we go. I'm gonna mix. I'm gonna do a mixture of about two thirds of paint. And then I'm gonna mix those together in my little container here. All right, so what I have is kind of a, well basically a painted, colored drywall compound, which is like pancake batter. You can kind of see it like that. And we're gonna use this trowel to apply it to the wall. Here goes nothing. It's okay. I'm gonna turn up my music. One of the reasons I chose this method is because there's so many little scuffs, dents, nail holes that I want to cover anyway. So I'd be putting a compound over anyway. So I thought, why not just do this instead? Here's the other thing, I'm painting with mostly white, so it's kind of hard to tell what I'm doing. In the next phase, we'll be tuning up the color, the saturation a little bit, so you'll be able to see the project a little bit better, but can you see it? It's hard to tell. So the first coat is done and I'm having a hard time with this being the first go round with this process because it's white and it's super difficult to tell. I really thought I'd see more highlights and lowlights, but I think I'm going to see that as it starts to dry, those sort of things start to show up. Other things I've learned, 
definitely a good idea to have more drop cloths than not enough because as this stuff sort of dries out and processes, it gets a little crumbly and then I'm dropping little pieces on the floor and then maybe I step on that and then I'm walking throughout the rest of the space. I'm sure it'll come up, it'll be fine, but just, you know, make sure you have enough drop cloths. So back when I was in theater school and we had to make massive backdrops and set pieces look like a certain time period or a certain part of different part of the world. And I just really adored the way it looked so matte. It looked like clay. And so this is my idea of replicating this process. And I'm just sort of going off of what I learned and remembered from back at theater school of how we mixed all of this paint and plaster together to sort of create this matte, um, soft, clay look in this bathroom. So again, this is my prototype. I'm just trying to get the recipe down before I actually apply some more saturated paint color to a different part of our basement down here. I also recommend starting small. So you may not love the way this turns out. So pick an accent wall, pick a small space, pick a closet, or just try it out on a piece of quarter inch board for instance, if you want to understand how it works and practice before actually applying it to a wall, fantastic idea. So the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to let this dry a little bit. My, um, I mixed a little bit more than what I needed, which learning process, right? So I'm going to let this dry and then I have some sandpaper, some really extra fine sandpaper that I'm going to sand down. Now, with this process, you do see texture, you do see knife marks or palette marks on the wall. And so you might decide, I don't love the palette look, the scraped look, the marks of that. So you might sand that down a little finer. Or on the flip side, maybe you like a little bit more texture or you like those marks. Feel free to just do whatever you like. So I'm going to sand this down. I don't want to see too many palette scraping marks. So I'm going to go for a little bit more of a finer finish. I'm going to sand down a little bit of some of the lines that I see on the wall. And then I'm going to go over the wall for the second time. And then that's it. Being this a bathroom, I might choose like a sealer on it so that it doesn't get wet. We do have an exhaust fan in here, but consider that when you are painting, the paint that I selected is durable enough to be in a bathroom. And that's that's the reason I selected the most durable kind of paint that I could possibly get for this project. That's basically the learning curve that I'm learning. I did kind of figure out the recipe. I think I figured out the recipe. So I'm super excited to apply this to the next portion of the project, the bigger portion of the project, although, I do think I'm going to still start with a small area, kind of the background of where our fireplace is going to go. I want to try it there first. And then if that works well, I'm just going to spread out and go from there. So I hope you're learning something. I hope you're enjoying this video. If you do, thanks so much for following along. <laughs> I just have a super fine sanding sponge here. <clears throat> and I'm just gonna go over the dried surface, just sort of even out some of the scrape marks. Again, maybe you want the scrape marks, maybe the texture is what you're going for. In that case, don't sand as much. And then I'm gonna go over back over it again for a second coat. This is probably more important if the color is super different than what the color was underneath. So I probably wouldn't need to do a second coat, but I just think I'll go through the process and just sort of understand what I'm gonna get myself into when I head to the next project. Make sure it's fully dry before you start sanding. So this is my second coat now. 
My mixture did get a little dried out, so I just used my paddle mixer again to just mix it back up, and that sort of helped reactivate it. So I'm not gonna have to remix a whole nother thing. I'm just gonna use what I have here. I did lightly sand over things, although I didn't really think I needed to. I can tell I missed spots where it's more shiny, more of the satin paint that must be underneath. Part of the process, it's just, fun to kind of understand how things go and work and how thick to put this on. I'm kind of using two fingers to sort of push down on this trowel. Okay, this is what I learned on my second go round. Learning, all of the time learning. Halfway through this process, I switched to this big metal knife and that's working well and actually because of the size I am going a lot faster with this one so I guess learning all of the time I'm gonna go wash this all up we'll let it dry up really good and then I'll come in with a close-up shot of the wall Generally don't use painter's tape when I'm painting, but this is a little bit sloppier and all more protection is better than not enough. Lesson. This officially finalizes this downstairs basement project. This wallpaper project was the only thing I had planned for this year for our basement until our water and sewer flood happened. If some of you have followed along with us on social media or in other ways, uh, if you're an email subscriber, you found out that early in December we had a water sewer back up in our basement which is really what triggered this entire project it has taken us three months now to complete this entire project and really once we started tearing carpet out and cleaning downstairs one thing really did lead to another and we ended up completely renovating this downstairs area which we had not done since we moved here nearly 11 years ago so i mean really it was due but it was not planned by any means so i'm super glad to have this project wrapped up right before spring starts before our busy season here on the farm 
Okay, enough of this mess. Are you ready for the review? So here is the final result of my DIY roaming clay project on this wall. The overall experience was super educational, I would say. I really enjoyed learning this process, figuring out the recipe, and then applying it to the wall and just sort of seeing what kind of magic can happen when you combine two different materials to create this new texture on this wall. I did learn a lot of things. I hope you learned some things, some lessons about how to create your own DIY roaming clay wall. If you have any questions, feel free to leave those down below and I will put the full recipe for this DIY Roman clay project over on the blog as well as down here in the description. Thank you so much for joining me while I show you the tips and tricks and the lessons I learned while doing this Roman clay application. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks so much for joining me. Have a great week. If you like DIY videos like this, subscribe and stay tuned for more.